Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Dr. John Belkowitz, and it's Q&A Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? Yeah. Wow. I think this is the first time that we've actually done a Q&A Wednesday on a Wednesday. And I'm talking about, like, three years. We've done one, but it's rare. <laughs> one. We've done one on a Wednesday. So, sorry, second time. Anyway, so... Chris, Chris Wanto Santoso sends us a question. Ding! Or is that what we're not doing that anymore? What are we doing? The, um, the bam, bam, bam? Are we? I thought so. No. No? I, mean, I, really, I like the ding. Ding! <clears throat> My feelings pop out when I do the bam, bam, bam. I don't like that. <laughs> um, Dr. Belkowitz, what holds crucial to make concrete batch consistent at batching plant? A con or a consistent mix from one mix to other, to the other. Excuse me. Uh, currently, the batch plant um, considers a, who is considered as a professional batcher still delivers a mix that is not consistent enough, so that in a f floor slab pour, the concrete setting area is different and very hard to finish to work jump from one area to the other. Also, there's some problems with segregation. Thank you. So I broke this up into, I, I wanna say two or, yeah, two essentials, one priority. Um, the priority is, the lead that I'm taking is, the ready mix provider that you're working with, despite the fact that they're delivering you concrete, they're just not delivering you quality concrete. And if you're the person just ordering the concrete, I don't know if there's a lot that you can do from your side to change up the consistency, um, or excuse me, the quality of that consistency. So I, I, please bear in mind all the information that I'm giving you, it, it's very limited to the people who can work on the mix now if you have a hand in that and if you have some skin in the game or if you have some impact on that that's you know god bless but at the very least i'd love to give you this information so uh the first thing that i, I think we've got to look at when it comes to consistency can be based on the mix itself there are certain mixes that look good on paper when they're designed when you order them but instead of being a robust mix that can be batched by any batchman, whether they batch person, whether they have 20 years in the trade or two, um, and whether or not there is an inconsistency in the moistures or the amount of water, whether that's, you know, the drum's not back spun or is, you know, there's some material left in the back of the mixer, um, we, we separate that into mixes that are sensitive that you, or, or excuse me, mix, let's start out with mixes that are robust, that are very easy to replicate, that are very easy to make, that you don't need an experienced person to make that mix versus sensitive mixes, which on the contrary are very hard to replicate and require a practiced hand to keep it consistent from batch to batch. So again, that's not something that you can really have an impact on. Um, the other thing, and of course, you know, what I see, what I mean by saying that is, <clears throat> excuse me one second. Sorry, my allergies are just kicking my butt today. So what, I, what I'm saying there is um, the mix design would need to be optimized. There would need to be a change in the balance between the aggregate to paste ratio while still maintaining the fresh and hardened properties to go from that sensitive mix to that more robust mix. Um, the second thing um, is a quali good quality management procedure uh, by either the ready mix provider or you, the end user. Um, there's a wonderful ASTM, and I, I, I can't send this to you. You're going to have to purchase this yourself, I think, from anywhere between $50 and $75. But there's some great sections in here, and an ASTM C94 is the standard specification for ready mix concrete. Any concrete or any ready mix provider that is worth their weight in gold will follow this to a certain degree. I would say to the letter, but sometimes that's just not realistic. Um, <clears throat> on uh, page five, section 10, there's something called batching plan, and this is something that I think all batch plans should have an awareness in, and it goes into <clears throat> f 
four different sections that go into the bins, the indicating devices, the scales. So we're back. Um, sorry about that. I had a snack before we started and yeah, I was just dying over here for a second there, but we're all good, <clears throat> I think. So anyway, um, ASTMC94 does a really good job of going into some of the things that you want to look at, not only on the batch or plant level, but also at the truck level too, some standard operating procedures that you want to use. And then there's also the sampling for uniformity. Now, the great part about that, there's another uh, a guideline that you can look at, ACI 132R-10, I believe it's what it's called, uh, or the alphanumeric, and the title of it, and, and this is just off the cuff, is um, uh, Guidelines for Responsibility on a Concrete Job Site. And basically what it says is that there is a responsibility of the end user to test the fresh and hardened properties of the concrete, and that normally means hiring a third party to come out there and test out concrete um, because you have a part in identifying the quality and if you're just saying that hey I've noticed a change in quality when I'm finishing that's not good enough especially when you want to confront your ready mix uh, provider supplier what you need to do is have data of a number of trucks to say hey I've been measuring this I put the investment in the time and the resources to identify that the mix that I'm buying is not what I'm getting, or the mix that I'm buying is not what I'm getting all the time. I'm getting different mixes from time to time, and here's the discoverable evidence that proves that over time. Um, so there's there's great information for ASTMC 94 um, that goes into that quality management. Um, but that third thing that I, I insinuated and I didn't mention is your participation. So uh, Chris Wanto. I think it's important that you review this. You can get this online. It's not too expensive. And looking at sections 10, looking at sections 12.5, uh, 12.51, um, even section 17 for sampling and testing of fresh concrete, it goes into uh, standard deviation of the strength, section 18, uh, or the standard deviation on materials, uh, then section 18 goes into third party testing or strength evaluation. And then what happens when you have a failure to meet strength requirements? I mean, I gotta say the folks who put ASTMC 94 together did a great job of creating something that was scalable and palatable for those crucial aspects for concrete batch plant consistency. So yeah, check it out. It'll give you more information, more detailed information that I can go into this video. Uh, and we'll send the link down below. So thanks for joining. Hopefully you learned something for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go Conquer